Hello there, I'm Dave Punch from Miko Training. One of my students suggested that I talk through the Miko training courses that are available. So Miko provide boat and yacht electrical training courses for, for boat owners, for, for you guys. So there are three main levels. The level one course is aimed at beginners, sort of a basic boat's electrical system. So nothing too elaborate in there. It's all about the basics. So we've got batteries, we've got chargers, we've got alternators, basic switching buzz bars, and all the sort of bread and butter stuff that gets the electrical system going behind the scenes. And we also look at a few uh, more specific elements, such as engine gauges, there was quite a bit on engine gauges, and how we monitor the current and the voltage within, within the circuit. So all this is explained in, in great detail. I suppose one of the most important parts of this course is cable sizing and circuit protection there. That's where I find there's an awful lot of mistakes made when I check out people's electrical system. Um, so there's really a detailed look at how exactly we correctly size cables and there's quite a bit more to it than most people think. Same with circuit protection, there's, there's a few things there that we need to really uh, carefully consider. So this is what you see anyway, even without enrolling in the course, this is what you can actually view. You can click on the course, any course you like, it talks a little bit, well, it explains a little bit about the course, there's some text there, but you can actually click through the first few sections. There'll always be uh, three or four sections of the start of each course that you can preview without having to enroll. And there'll be one, at least one lecture that's further down the course that shows you, you know, the sort of level that you'll advance to, or, you know, so you get an insight into the more complex areas as well. So we'll just click through um, just a few of these sections, just so you get to see uh, a, a quick insight. So this introduction here just talks again a little bit about the course but um, what my students have found quite useful, that's quite good feedback on this, is there's a, a detailed syllabus within that introduction there that you can actually download, you can click on that and it'll download to your computer, it's just a PDF uh, and you can print that out and it actually it, it's, quite a, it's quite nice just to tick off those sections as you work through the courses but that's everything that's covered there so even though this is a basic course, there is still quite a lot in there. So no previous experience is required. You don't need any uh, previous electrical knowledge at all to, to do this course. And there are upgrade paths. If you, if you do decide that you want to upgrade to the level um, two course, you can, you can click on an upgrade path there. So this is quite a useful part of the course as well. You can leave comments here um, at any stage. That's me, Dave Punch, there. A lot of people just introduce themselves on this page here just to sort of say, you know, uh, looking forward to the course, that sort of thing. So these help boxes there, you can just type any, anything in there and post that comment and I'll, I'll, I'll see that straight away and I can reply. You can actually also email me if you've got any questions on the course as well. You can just email me directly. So there's nothing really to do in that section. It's just an introduction there, and it just highlights this important step here. You've got to click the Complete and Continue button at the top right-hand corner to go on to the next stage. And you'll see on the left it shows us all the syllabus there, and it's ticked off introduction. So we're on to the first page of the actual course here. This is just an introduction to voltage, current, and resistance. We use the water analogy to explain how electricity behaves in a circuit, because it's something that a lot of people can visualize much easier. So we've got a source of energy, and we've got high pressure on one side, then we've got resistance here and low pressure on the other side. And we then make a correlation between the water analogy and actually start using the proper terms resistance and the ohm, pressure is the volt, and flow is the current, the sort of liters per minute, if you like, is the, is the current. And we re-emphasize throughout the course that it's actually voltage that's pushing the current through a resistance. So voltage comes first and that creates a current and then the resistance holds that current back. And that's sort of a really, really important first step in understanding any electrical system is to thoroughly understand the relationships between voltage, current and resistance. So there's a video on that as well. This sort of interactive whiteboard here is part of each of the lectures. So you can click on the video and you get the introduction there. Um, and there's a volume control here, you can make it bigger and smaller, you can fill the screen with it if you like. And you get to hear my voice again. Welcome to the first lesson of Boat and Yacht Electrical yeah. Course Level 1. I'm Dave Punch and I'll be taking you through the course from start to finish. And of course you can pause the lectures at any stage and if you want to skip through, you can skip through a little bit. Quite a useful feature in these um, little uh, interactive whiteboards is, is that you can actually comment 
any stage you can write comments in here that only you see so this is like your notebook so on each of the lectures you can actually make notes within the video just by typing in clicking on the i little i window there and you can actually make notes on that video there so when it, whenever you get to that stage your notes will come back up again so if there's something that you're not quite sure of and this is quite common there might be a word that i've used or a term and you're just not sure exactly what that means you can just make a note in the video and then ask me a question on it go down to the support box here ask a question i'll answer the question you can go back to the lecture and just make a little note in there so when that word comes up again you've got the definition there so it's just a personal thing everybody learns slightly differently so the ability to just make notes within those videos is actually really quite useful so after the video we reiterate what's covered in the video with some text so we flick from text graphics video more text um, we go into more detail there might be optional sections where we look into more of the science behind that and there's a obviously the comments box there so there's no quiz on this first section there but as we work through the course then we'll find that each section will actually have a quiz a lot of people put comments on here ask questions or just give some feedback which is really useful for me it helps me develop the course and um, so lots of sort of happy students um, there as, as we scroll through so once you're happy with that lesson and it's probably one of the most important ones if you're new to electrics and how electricity behaves in a circuit then this is definitely the most important section so we click comp complete and continue and then we start looking at how we measure the overall power of a system and that's really useful as well very very important part of the course again there's a video on that so you click on the video you get the short introduction and there's voiceover and we go through the, the maths behind how we work out power from voltage and current there's some working examples there nothing too drastic and again are lots of people there asking questions as well so complete and continue on that one so it's all pretty straightforward at this stage and then we get on to testing so this is how now that we've covered um, voltage and current and resistance we look at how we can actually measure those so we go straight from the sort of theoretical side straight into the application of that theory so you're not sort of left out on a tangent left out on a limb for ages until you suddenly realize oh actually we can measure this and we can use this information to find faults and prevent faults on board so we introduce sort of a fairly standard multimeter with this video here and we look at how we can use that as well not just what it does but we can actually look at practical applications of the multimeter so we look at measuring voltage resistance and current but we also introduce the dc clamp meter a lot of meters have this sort of clamp option here but most of the ones you see are not really designed for use on boats because they don't measure direct current so this is a DC clamp meter that actually measures both direct current and alternating current. So you can use it on your battery circuits, but you can also use it on your main sort of shore power circuits as well. It's an enormously useful piece of kit. And this is a fairly reasonably priced one as well. So really useful uh, video there. There's a sort of more elaborate one here that's clickable. So you can actually click on the multimeter on the different symbols here. And the voice, I've actually turned the volume down, but there's a voiceover in the background that actually explains what each of these... You have selected volts DC. Make sure the voltage you're measuring does not exceed the capabilities of the meter or the leads. So it's a sort of talking multimeter, and it actually shows you where the leads must be connected for each of the different uh, settings there. You've selected millivolts DC, and this is great for measuring really small voltages. One millivolt is one thousandth of a volt. It's a little sort of talking multimeter. It's quite useful just to play around with. You have selected ohms, and this is for measuring resistance. So once we're happy with that, we click on complete and continue. So it's not too quizzy at this stage. It's not so much about testing you at this stage. It's just about learning and get, getting comfortable with all the, all the basics. So we click continue on there. And now we're into batteries. Um, so there's quite a few safety issues 
here with uh, with batteries as well and there's a lot of terminology with batteries and people find it really difficult to come to terms with all these different abbreviations so there's a lot of explanation going on here we look at how the batteries can be connected together safely to produce either a higher voltage or a higher current and because of the sort of safety issues regarding batteries and because there's just so much misinformation out there this is where we start bringing in the quizzes so it's really important to fully understand this section before you go on to any other section if you have any problems with that quiz i do get to see the marks that you make on on the the, the levels that you reach on this quiz and if you get say one out of 12 correct then you might you probably get another opportunity well i will give you another opportunity to, to have a look at this section again and have another go at that quiz in order to finish the course you have to get decent marks in the quizzes you can't just sort of click through you can progress through the course without doing the quiz and even if you get a low mark you can progress through the course but at some stage you will have to go back to that quiz and maybe have another look at the section watch the videos again by all means ask me questions in the support box if there's something you don't understand and then have another go at the quiz okay so it might not let you complete and continue on some of the lessons if it is a real safety issue but in this case we can proceed with the course and um, carry on if even if there's something we don't understand we can sort of think well I'll carry on and we'll, we'll sort of come back to that later so this section is on buzz bars and um, so this allows us buzz bars allow us to sort of distribute electricity from one, one sort of connection into multiple connections the next section is on cable sizing so we look at both ISO cable sizing and the ABYC methods for cable sizing so whether you're in Europe, the UK, or America, or Canada, or anywhere in the world, everybody uses one of all the other methods. So it talks in great detail. There's a video there about how we measure uh, the dreaded voltage drop, because that's what governs, really, the sizing of our cables. And there are all sorts of formulas that you can download as well, and tables. If you prefer using tables to size cables, I've created tables. that, If you don't like doing maths, that's fine. I've got big old tables and spreadsheets that you can use as well. Please do speak up if there's something you're not sure about and you just want clarification. Just fire off a, a question in the comments box or just drop me an email. So the USA version there, the ABYC, uh, American Boat and Yacht Council, they have their methods and uh, they have their own the, a different formula and it uses feet as you would expect in America. Um, so just moving on through here, we've got switching little gif animation here that just shows the different types of switching and there's a three position switch that you often find on the uh, bilge pump these little gifs are quite good because they just cycle through and it just sort of shows um how those how those systems work real basic stuff you might already have a good understanding of this anyway but it does progress the complexity of the course does progress as, as you go through a little bit on two-way switching as well so if you've got lights in the cabin and you want to be able to switch those on and off at the door and on and off at the at the side of the bed we show you how to do two-way switching with this video here there's a sort of two-way switching where we use single pole dual throw switching so quite a useful lesson there uh, circuit protection absolutely critical section here so lots of lessons and text on circuit protection and a quiz there as well and we we'll just quickly look through the next sections here this is where we start progressing into the more complex areas we're looking at the innards of a alternator it's absolutely vital that you understand even at this basic level a little bit about the fundamentals of how an alternator behaves obviously a quiz question some quiz questions on that so we look at charging and the different methods of charging multiple um, batteries from one alternator so this is a really key section here if you've got some domestic batteries and some start batteries and only one alternator we look at all the different methods that you can apply to segregate those batteries so that they charge as one but they discharge as two separate battery banks really important section there we also look a little bit at the battery charging from the shore power not too much on that just a little bit of text on that shore power is covered in great detail in the level two course starter motors as well a really important section here on starter motors we look at how the um, how the starter motor actually works a little bit um, we've got some nice video uh, a video sort of animation there of it actually 
energizing and throwing the cog forward. And just the process, the start button, the relay, the solenoid and the starter motor. A little bit on monitoring. Um, it's nice to know what's happening with your electrical system while you're charging or discharging the batteries. It's nice to see which way they're going. You know, are my batteries charging up or are they discharging? Nice to know if you're a tanker. And also engine gauges, how engine gauges work. Uh, a detailed look, how to test them as well. Find out whether it's the gauge or the sensor. Um, and a little bit on how we can get engine data onto chart plotters, although I must admit that's much covered in much more detail in the level three course. And just to finish up there, just some practical um, lessons here on crimping and which crimpers to use with which crimps, that sort of thing, even right up to the, 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 the larger, uh, sort of up to 120 mil things, the hydraulic crimpers, all the way down from sort of, um, you know, one mil to 120 mil cable. So, that's a great lesson there. And then at the end of all that, there's a completion section there. And once you've completed the course, if you've done all right in the quizzes, you get a course completion certificate that you can download. If you want to, or you've been sponsored by your employer to do this course, you can do the written exam, which is a PDF. I send it to you via email. You print it out, you fill it in, and just scan it back to me or a good photo back. Sign it that you've done it in on your own, and then you get a course a, a pass certificate which is a physical certificate that I'll send through the post okay so that's the level one course and um, so I'll do another couple of videos on the levels two and three but that's a nice insight hopefully for you guys just to have a quick look through the level one course and that sort of that whole process okay just to finish up if you do want to enroll click on the enroll now button and it takes you to the payments page here and you can pay using credit cards or Apple Pay, anything you prefer. Uh, and you can get to upgrade paths. So if you want to do the level one and the two, you can upgrade to the level two there just with a, a discounted upgrade route there. So you know, by all means, have a look at the free sections. If you want to enroll in the course, just click the enroll button and fill in your details there. Any questions, please do email me at davidpunch at mecotraining.com. Thank you very much for watching.